Thanks for joining us again. Episode two of The Full Impact, where we take our local staff together and we talk about the journalistic um, stories that we're working on and um, the news world as we see it. And then we dive into the entertainment world and and to give a feel of what we do at the impact. So, James, some big news coming out of the adjunct negotiation. Talk to us about what's going on over there. Yes, yeah, so their saga continues. Um, on February 14th, they had a meeting to resume negotiations, which had they hadn't met in a few months. And on opening minutes of the inter, or of the negotiation, the union walked out. Um, they're supposed to have another meeting on March 2nd and 7th. Uh, they have indicated that if things don't change to how the first meeting was set up and prearranged things, they would walk out of those meetings and they are threatening to go further um, with their actions, which could affect the Mercy campus at large. There's several things on the table, not, nothing official yet, though. When and the next meeting is scheduled for when? March 2nd. March and then this March 2nd and March 7th are their next two meetings. James, how long is this adjunct just? been going on with with mercy how long you've been you've been covering this story for a long time how long is it? so the first interview i had with an adjunct was will be a year ago next month so last march um i did my first story with alexis who was the previous managing editor and we broke down their meetings which was shortly after like about a few months after they unionized totally i believe and had their first full like real sit down with mercy college great sounds fun it's electric um, that's an opportunity to drop in a, uh, yep. a th- see what we're doing here see what we're doing here we make it easy on them P. i mean come on now come on nicole talk to us what's going on in your world so i'm um, trying to work on a story with tim hall um there's a huge inequality rate for graduations um people that are wealthier have a higher chance of graduation And um, I know um, Tim Hall is working on a toolkit for success for graduation, which is supposed to help level out the inequality rate and succession for graduation for all students. So is this inequality rate just for Mercy College or across the board in all colleges? Across uh, nationally, yeah. Excellent. Brittany, talk to us. What's going on? So I'm working on a couple of stories, one of them being the recent news announced by President Hall that commencement for this year will be held in person over the course of three days. So I've reached out to a couple of people from public relations and the health department and trying to hear back on really more clarification on the story. It's important to note that in the email that he sent he said that anything can really happen because this pandemic has been unpredictable so not really to bank on um if it's going to be held in person or not but that's really the plan for right now do you think the students are receptive to this and and really want to be together for graduation i think they do um just over the course of the past year, hearing different students, they do want it to be held in person, especially since previous commencements have been held online. But at the same time, we want everyone to be safe. So it's kind of depends on how it's going to be held. Great. Malik, what's going on in your reporting? Hey, well, something exciting is going on. On Sunday, I'm joining a Zoom meeting for a uh, political club at Mercy. We're going to talk about American history for President's Day. That's pretty exciting. Who's your favorite president? Lincoln. I love Lincoln. Lincoln or Kennedy? Okay. Kennedy. Yeah. Why do you, why? Well, I love Kennedy because this is bad, but he was with Marilyn Monroe and Lincoln because I like the Civil War. Okay. All right. Yeah. Listen, good job, JFK, you know, and uh, Lincoln was a heck of a wrestler and a boxer they say so oh i didn't know that oh yeah they say lincoln loved his wrestling so gotta like lincoln what'd you think did you see that vampire movie with lincoln no i didn't even try it don't don't (laughs) not good i wanted to watch that other one that steven spielberg made i want to watch that one i never saw it i want to it's great 
People complain it's like watching C spam, but if you're like into history, you'll love it. Yeah, I've always wanted to. I don't know why. I don't know why I never caught it. We should watch it. Miss Plazier. D, what's up? Um, so I've been working on a story um involving campus life and student life. Um, I've been trying to talk to some teachers and some students, they feel like compared to the Australia campus that the other campuses in Manhattan and Bronx um, don't have as much activities or events for the students. And um, some people have decided to like maybe try to take a lead and try to do something about that and change some things. Um, some issues that I've been running into with the story is that like people talk to me about it, but it's kind of hard to get students like actually who want to go on the article so I can like I will have conversations with them about it, but then I'm like, do you want to be in the article and you know sometimes like they go me and they shut it down so that's the teachers are easier to talk to but the students are kind of harder. You know, a lot of times it's a good reporting, you know, um, learning experience that a lot of people have a lot of opinions on things. But the moment they have to attach their name to it, um, yeah. then that changes real quick. So always uh, take for a grain of salt uh, people who are willing to openly say things but don't want to put their name behind it. Uh, Luis, what's up with you? What's going on in the sports world or anything else you're working on? Um, so I'm working on a well, – I'm finished with a uh, writing on mental health in – well, specified in college sports because sometimes – you know, they always give us like the, the same old, like, oh, you can reach out and email us, whatever, but giving like, you know, giving more people to talk about it and, you know, giving them a chance to speak about like how to help people out that maybe don't want to talk about it to other people. So yeah, that's what I'm working on. As an athlete yourself, do you, and like, I'm sure you're pretty well ingrained in the athletic community. Do you find that there are some students who struggle with some mental health being an athlete in the challenge? Yeah, I think it's a, uh, a lot of it is just with stress in on themselves on like, you know, wanting to be the best at what they're doing and also balancing work like school. A lot of them work a job. So it's a lot. And sometimes people put pressure on you. So you just it's it is it is definitely is as many even if it's not as high and low as other people. But I think everyone deals with it at some point and just you just, everyone just got to see how to like, you know, deal with it in their own way. Excellent. What are you working on, Kate? Yeah, so today, me and Danielle will be visiting the Mueller House for an interview today at 3 p.m. here in Terrytown. So I'm very excited for that. Tell us about it. What is it? So Mercy recently bought, I'm assuming it's a room. Um, it's for alumni. It's going to be an alumni center. Um, and I am I believe they're going to be holding events in the future for, of course, alumni. So, And the house is beautiful. I saw pictures of it. So it would be a, a very nice center for us alumni in the future very cool very cool here's the part of full impact where we shift gears from our reporting and we talk about things that are interesting interesting us from around the world artistically or whatnot who would like to begin who's watched a some an interesting show Luis, go ahead buddy um i just gotta say if anyone hasn't watched it yet the Kanye documentary came out well the first part of it on netflix and it's really good and it's a really good watch to see a different side of him like it's it's all about like the whole first episode is like only from like when he's 19 to like 22. So it's pretty good if anyone likes that stuff. He made the documentary himself or someone? Uh, someone. So one of his they talk about like they actually go like really in depth of who the guy is that actually made the documentary. But it's like a someone that was just a regular like radio host and saw Kanye when he was 19 and thought that he was going to be really good. So he left his entire career behind just to record him for the next 20 years. And so if. If your girlfriend broke up with you, would you have a truckload of roses delivered to her house? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Nowadays, it's a lot. I was actually, I, I just had a big, we were, like, we were, we were talking about it with, like, me and my girlfriend and her mom. We we're just talking about the whole situation because I, I like to defend Kanye. You like to defend Con your team Kanye? I love him. He's, I can't. I can't not. He, he's just, he's awesome. What is there to defend? No, I not like, I don't defend that stuff. I just think it's funny, honestly. Yeah. But like he's, you know, he's. I. It's honestly crazy. I, I after watching the, the documentary yesterday, like it's crazy how just you know how different he is, and how much he's like so much. He's totally different. I don't know if I'm buying. He's totally different. But anybody right, else? You should, you, you should definitely try it. I, I mean, listen. I'm intrigued. I don't know anything about him. I don't know one song he sings. 
um, nor do I want to. Every time I say that and I say to the students, well, you tell me what he thinks. Like, well, that one with the song. So I don't really know if, you know, um, but I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm always uh, interested in and pity these people who grow up in the public eye. Like they can't do anything without being in the public eye. And now um, they complain about it, but now they use it to their advantage when things aren't going their way and just these outlandish posts. And um, so I usually don't follow this type of news, but I, I'm really interested at his social media posts. And it's like, it's just kind of like in high school when like, you know, the popular guy got dumped and now she's dating the nice guy and the, and the popular guy's like really angry about it. Like hates this other guy, you know, that damn skeet. So I'm, um, I'm getting a kick out of it. I'm getting a kick out of it. I feel bad for, for Kim. And I don't even really like the Kardashians, but I mean, I don't know. I guess she kind of knew who he was when, when she got with him. Just some tea. Anybody else? I agree with him. I feel like, and like, because of the whole thing with his kids, he doesn't want them to be on TikTok or whatever. He doesn't want the, their face to be, but he grew up with that. You know, that's, they're, they're celebrities. Like you're gonna, your kids are gonna be in there. So it's like, I'm like divided on the side, but I think he's being like abusive with Kim. Like he shouldn't be like tormenting her. You know? I agree. He it's wrote in a song that like pretty much um, he's, he uh Pete should th- or something like that. I'm not I don't know if it's right, but Pete should thank him for allowing him to be with him, which is like outrageous. I think you guys, I think I think his uh his PR team um got hands over his Instagram now because all of it is gone. Oh, oh yeah. deleted and daily. Took, deleted took, daily. I love it. And he took the uh the caps the caps lock off. So I think yeah. I don't think it's him anymore. Yeah, I mean we're on the verge of stalking here. And and listen, this is how how bad things happen. You know, like bad things happen in in the heat of passion, and this is where bad things kind of happen. And well, now he has now he has the house across the street, so which is maybe the worst thing. You know, like that's that's you know, um, it's a little scary. You know, we laugh because they're celebrities, but it it can be scary and it could get scary really quick, especially when you're dealing with very powerful people who are not used to hearing no, who don't not used to getting their own way. When money buys everything, um, things can get pretty dangerous so in my background you might see the wonder wheel that is a ferris wheel um in coney island it's the opening shot to the movie the warriors which uh february 9th was 43 years since the warriors came out um famous for the bottle clinking warriors come out and play anybody ever see that movie know anything about it it's a great movie i watched it It it's a good movie Good costume. Movie. Good costume too for Halloween if everyone wants to do it. Awesome. Perfect costume. Listen, it is the epitome of so I guess it came out uh 81, 80, 81, maybe 79. And um it's just a really interesting look at New York. Uh I've always been a fan of the movie as a kid. I loved seeing the places where they shot it. And it's also you know, if you look into it, there's a lot of things you don't realize, like a lot of the gangs and all the costumes are actually based on real gangs that existed in the in the New York City in the 60s, in the early 70s. So they kind of uh, went over the top with it. It's a great musical score. Um, there's some good action and it's based on on a Greek myth, you know, about these warriors who were separated and had to fight their way back home. So it's it's really good entertainment. There's a great scene where a prom scene where they're on the subway where like people fought all night or dealing with like the rich kids who went to prom and it's a good little showdown. So if you've never seen it, it's a really good look at New York in the late seventies. Um, and the funnier thing too, someone totally destroyed the movie for me the other day. It's like, wait a minute, they're this gang and they're like trapped and they've got to get all the way back to New York and they're like running and taking subways. They're like if they're criminals, why can't they just steal a car? And it's like, well, yeah, I guess that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the movie, but um, pretty funny aspect. So our final segment is now we're going to get into uh, 30 seconds of our impactful mindness. So where one of our staff rants for 30 seconds about something that means a lot to them. And we are about to turn it over to. 
Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Daniela. Um, something important for me, it's funny because who would have thought? Um, two weeks ago, one of my one of my professors told us uh, what was something that we wish have done different at Mercy. So I wrote, my answer was like, I wish I would uh, have participated more in like the events that Mercy has. So my surprise, the following week, I saw on the Mercy walls that the Mercy Theater Club is doing auditions for, I don't know what play, I don't know what they're doing. Um, and <laughs> deep inside of me, I like singing and I like acting. So I'm super, super scared because of the language barrier, um, because language uh, English is my second language. But I thought, why not? I'm gonna graduate this uh, May, this coming May, and I'm gonna be done with my studies. So why not trying something different? So, <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess that's really important for me right now. Um, I'm gonna try. If it turns that I get in, great. If I don't, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be okay. But um, yeah that's those are my thoughts for this week so for the people out there who is in my position english is their second language and they're scared to just do a, a step like be 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 brave um you're not alone <laughs> let's see how it turns out so all love excellent impactful thoughts the best of luck on the stage sing your heart out dance your heart out, act your heart out. And um, when you're up there, we're coming to see you. So thank you everyone for joining us on our second episode of Full Impact. And we will see you next week. Thank you very much.